So I had uh, chatted with you before, and you told me something I found to be fascinating. I'd like to revisit it. That there was this moment in time where you were getting a little bit of grief, getting a little bit of criticism for the way that you were operating, and you ran into Waylon. Yeah. Walk me through that story and the impact of what he said. Well, I I was I was doing great at the beginning of the career uh, with Country Club. Help me hold on. I'm gonna be somebody. Those songs were monsters, all, all big, and they fit right into the country music format. Everything was great. And then I got up to uh, I wanted to release "Put Some Drive in Your Country" as a single, and it had all these rock guitars on it and this, that, and the other. And man, I started getting grief. I started getting it first from radio, and then I started getting it from the establishment in Nashville record label, this, that, and the other, and I was just adamant that, look, I'm not trying to make any kind of a statement here. I'm just trying to show you the influences that I had that were outside of traditional country music when I was growing up, but just as much a part of me as anything else that I've ever done. And I was just adamant that I wanted to make sure that I got that stuff out there in front of the audience because that's just as much a part of me as any other part. And I started getting all this pushback. Well, he must be difficult to work with, or he's insisting on doing things his own way. He doesn't want to go along with it. He's not a team player. And uh, frankly, there were some that just came right out and said it. Uh, he must be an asshole. And um, it. then they came out with the outlaw. He's an outlaw. He's a nonconformist. He's a... He's an outlaw. He's a renegade. He's a rebel. He's an outlaw. And the negative, they weren't saying it in a nice way. It was very negative. And I started, man, I mean, I'd pick up a magazine or I would hear on the radio, hear some disc jockey talking about it or uh, hear somebody in the industry talk about it. And it was like, man, I just don't get it, you know? All I'm wanting to do is just do it my own way. And it was starting to get depressing for me. I was it was it was hurting my feelings, to be honest. And when I met Waylon Jennings, met him in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Omni in Atlanta, we were doing a show together. And we came into his dressing room and we took pictures and met him and just told him how much I admired him and how much of a of an influence he'd been on me. And, so my little group, we're getting ready to walk out, and I'm the last one, and I'm to the door. I've got my hand on the doorknob. And Waylon said, hey, Hoss, talking to me? Yeah, come here, man. I want to talk to you. And he brought me back in by myself, and he said, sit down in that chair. I want to talk to you for a minute. He said, I've been hearing everything that they've been saying about you in the press and radio and in Nashville. He said, let me just tell you something. Everything that they are saying about you is exactly the same things that they said about me and about Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash and Hank Williams Jr. and Chris Christopherson, and he just went down the list. He said, let me ask you a question. He said, you still selling records? I said, yes, sir. Every single one of them is selling extremely well. He said, people still coming to see your shows? I said, yes, sir, they are. It's packed every night. He said, that's all that matters. He said, that's who you're doing it for. He said, these people in Nashville, he said, the people at radio stations and these people at the record labels and these people that write for these country music ma magazines, he said, they get their music for free. Mm. For free. He said, the people that should matter to you are those people that go out there and work 40 and 50 and 60 hours a week hard to earn that living, to put food on the table for their families, and they're willing to spend a certain amount of that money to go out and buy your music and occasionally go out and buy a concert ticket if you come to town. He said, that's who you play for. He said, those other people, pay no attention to them. That's not who you're playing for. That's not who you're doing this for. You're doing it for them. And it was like <laughs> mind-blowing. Was that a big weight off? Oh, huge, yeah. huge, because he was exactly right. The more I thought about what he told me, 
the more it made absolute sense. And then I got it reinforced from Charlie Daniels and other people who told me exactly the same thing. And it was like, don't pay attention to that, man. It doesn't matter. You know who you are. You know that you're none of those things that they say you are. And that they're trying to transfer, somehow or another, they're trying to transfer this perception into the reality of who you really are. And that's totally not the case. But you know who you are. You know that you're not any of those things. That you're just trying to do music the best way you possibly can and the only way you know how to do it. And that's your way. And just stay on that path, man. As long as the audience is responding the way that they are, that's all that matters to me. And it did. It lifted a huge weight off my shoulders. God bless Waylon Jennings. Yeah, absolutely.